unfortunately, it saddens me to say, right before my eyes, I've watched my dung beetle numbers, the amount of worm castings and worms reduce by up to 50 to 70% amongst my cow patties in the past two years. So hang around and I'll give you a few farming truths and it's both bittersweet. G'day guys, Jason from The Other Farm here. I find it rather hilarious, amusing though somewhat heavily misleading when some YouTube creators make content and state they heavily advocate that they do not worm or haven't wormed their livestock in many years because they don't graze them into the dirt and get issues with worms. Though on the very next topic or subject, they're happy to make videos and state they've got tick issues. And Therefore, from my experience, if you've got cattle ticks, I'm not talking about bush ticks or scrub ticks, then unfortunately you've got no choice but to use chemicals. And if you're not using chemicals, clearly you haven't got cattle ticks. More than likely, they're a scrub or a bush tick, which can affect humans when they jump in and burrow in, but they're not so much the livestock, that's cattle ticks. And I know for a fact, if you've got cattle ticks, coming from a tick zone which I am in, Unfortunately, I'm not lucky enough to be in a tick-free zone. We have to treat for cattle ticks. And if you don't, then you've got issues. I've done a few videos on it now. One female tick can lay up to 3,000 eggs. Let's say that out of that 3,000 eggs, one third of them are viable. And out of that one third, which is 1,000, half of them are females. 500 females, if they were viable and to lay 3,000 eggs each, that's 1.5 million if I recall. And if you're not treating it, it's just expert potential there on. In six months here in Queensland, if you're leaving them, not treating them, you've got issues come either the end of the season or early next season. You'll have an explosion of ticks and you won't be out of control and your livestock are going to suffer. I can say with a high degree of confidence, if you're chemically treating your animals for ticks, you are definitely also treating inadvertently, whether you like it or not, for worms. I've got two products with me at the moment. Well, actually the boxes. I've got a third product at home, which doesn't come in a box, so I didn't want it sitting in the sun. I'll go first the Doramax, or the, sorry, the Dectamax. It's a Doramectum, and it treats for lungworms, sucking lice, Biting lice, buffalo flies, mange mites, ticks, and gastrointernal roundworms. Even though I'm intentionally treating them for ticks only, I've covered all the worms. It even goes down to small brown worm, stomach worm, eye worm, hair worm, small intestinal worms, hook worms, neck intestinal worms, whip worm. You're just killing all the worms anyway, so this next one is Moxie, and it is, it's Moxidectin. And it says on the side, cattle ticks, aids for controlled buffalo fly, mites, controls biting, sucking lice, kills worms for longer. But this one hasn't got impact on dung beetles. And also it's got no withholding period for your meat for slaughter. Whereas this one is a 42 day withholding period. So even if you get something like this, we found that it doesn't last as long for the ticks, but that's not the point. It's still killing worms. And the ACK attack we got at home is also killing worms, but it's got a long withholding period and it lasts up to six weeks where these ones are a four week period. The only natural treatment that I've come across for cattle ticks is a cocktail of essential oils such as you've got your cinnamon, lemon, orange, lavender, cedar, all those mixed together, the odor repels, it doesn't kill, it repels the ticks. But it's only good for around seven to 14 days. And here in Queensland, Australia, the tick period for us in this tick zone lasts anywhere between six months, and at the moment, it's looking it could go into seven to eight months. And I can assure you, I haven't got that much time to chase the livestock around every 10 to 14 days to spray oil on. 
that's why I've got no choice but to use chemicals because they range, like I mentioned before, in between 28 days to six weeks. This year, as you know, if you follow us regularly, we tried to break our tick cycle. We'd done our six months straight and everything was sweet. Come February was our last treatment. Generally March, if you had ticks, you can treat then and that would be your last. We didn't treat because we had no ticks. But then come April, we noticed a few ticks and we didn't want to treat because we're on our point of limits with our ac attack and some of our poisons. But then come, and we knew the cooler weather was coming in in May. So we took the chance because the it's abnormal hot conditions, ticks soon jumped up for their last blood before winter. And if you have a look there around this young fella, check out him there on his flank. Look at all those ticks underneath on his whistle. And I'll go behind and I'll show you in between his legs and his groin area. If you keep still enough for me, I'll go over and show you. He is absolutely loaded with ticks. Check out in between his back there, back legs. Right down his legs, inside, on his genitals, laden with ticks. So this is the first time it's ever happened to us that we've had to treat in May. We had no choice because as you've seen, that is absolutely awful. We could not leave them. It's unfair, it's unhumane for the animal and also they're gonna lose condition. So we treated them yesterday for ticks and we're hoping this is the last time we've actually got a treat before winter. We're supposed to be getting colder weather next month. And what are you, that poor on I use yesterday should last a four week period and should run into mid June. Furthermore, how we have not treated, all those females potentially could drop off and stay dormant in the soil or grass till winter, then come spring, exponentially, there would be a load more ticks to deal with. So we'd sooner do it now and hopefully reduce the numbers dramatically come the start of the tick season later on in the year after winter. So my family has always treated for ticks. It wasn't until I've gone down this regenerative path that I've decided to try and limit the amount of poisons I was using. So I stopped treating ticks across the board. The first couple of years, but the ticks weren't too bad and I was happy to accept a little bit of a tick burden rather than kill or diminish the amount of worm castings or worms and dung beaters I had in my paddy, which were sanitizing the ground and taking that fertility back through. I done some videos oh, when I first started. One was, am I regenerative farming right? I think was the name of it, and another one, where you could physically see the manure moving because the dung beetles that were in there, that were just laden of dung beetles. And, you've, and there's a video I've got, I'm shooting down into it, and it's just bubbling away just with life. And there's about six to eight worm castings in that manure. For those, so for those two years, when I wasn't treating for ticks, I was treating for no chemicals on my animals at all. I wasn't doing worms because I was keeping them out of the grass. I wasn't grazing them into the dirt so they weren't getting worm issues. There was no chemicals and the soil life and the dung life was amazing. It just all come to life. Life was good for everybody, for the soil life, the biology, and the livestock. Though the last two years now, we've had excessive amounts of rain with floods and the ticks have just been horrendous. So the last two years I've had to, humanely, for the livestock, treat them for ticks. And inadvertently, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I have not come across a chemical yet that doesn't cover all aspects of internal and external parasites when you're doing for ticks. It's killing them all. So unfortunately that has come through into the dun. So the dun's a little bit toxic. Now I can go around and I reckon I've got only 30, 50 to 30% left of the dung beetles and worm castings. I'm probably only getting one or two casts now if I'm lucky, sometimes none. And you might get the odd dung beetle, but I don't see any moving. But I've had to do that because I'm not going to sacrifice the well-being of my livestock because that, that is what is making you money. You are, even though the grass 
makes you money. You're not buying fodder. I'm not buying grain. End of the day, that is what I could sell to make money, to profit. The grass is also making me money because I'm not outlaying it. So there's a fine balance you've got to find between livestock health and soil biology health. I'm hoping that when this big wet season finishes, we can get on to still maintaining the ticks, but not as long a period and maybe reducing the dosage, not the dosage, but reducing the chemicals to the ones that don't harm dung beetles or worms. I can see that working in when times are good, when the tick burdens aren't high, you can use it then. But at the moment, our chemicals we're using have to have that longer period of 42 days or either 52 days because as I've shown in that video, that, that bully calf of ours, the tick burden's horrendous. So anyway, guys, I hope you got something out of that. Have a good morning, a terrific afternoon and an awesome evening wherever you're watching this from, and we'll catch you later. Give you guys some water, eh? If you're moving out here tonight, you've got another day yet. Thank you.